What's up, Fox Trotters? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Maybe consider subscribing before you leave today. If you're returning, hello, it's nice to see you all again. You guys look great. Yes, you person who was absolutely cursing the day you learned how to make homemade bread. No one told me it was this easy. <laughs> you look great. All right, I hope everybody is ready for an r slash anti MLM video. I am so ready to get into this for two reasons. One, I'm so excited to leave that bombshell beads video in the dust. And two, I'm just ready to get into it. I took a little bit of a break for a while. Uh, if anybody, any of you have been paying attention to my community tab, you guys already know, no need to get into it. Let's just go ahead and move on to the bright new day of r slash anti MLM content and have some laughs together. And a quick shout out to Lori B who sent me three of the most fantastic and iconic LuLaRoe shirts that have ever existed. They're nefarious they're infamous it is the hot dog shirt and I am now the proud owner of not just the hot dog shirt but the hamburger shirt and also the infamous turdma one day when I do a face reveal you already know what my outfits are gonna be and I wear them ironically I need to state that clearly for the record I guess loudly okay let's go and get into some arsloss and to MLM stuff and thank you Lori so much for sending me that that was an incredible gift absolutely insane going through a divorce and literally the worst time in my life and this is what pops in my dms they have zero shame i don't have kids i do have a two-year-old dog so i'm a cool dog mom <laughs> but like you i just got out of a toxic relationship it should have ended years ago but i truly do believe that everything has its time and place in the universe i love that you are all about manifesting taking the time to pour into yourself so that you may grow into a better individual friend and mama Ugh. I see you focusing and taking control of your health and I adore that about you. When most people want to give up, not saying days are hard, but you find the strength and courage to show up for yourself day after day and that, my friend, is so powerful. This is somewhat random, but I'm currently building a health and wellness business with Arbonne International and I truly believe you would be incredible. Have you heard of Arbonne or the opportunity before? Have we heard of Arbonne? <laughs> oh, just a little bit. Let's break it down. Okay, yes, let's. All right, so this Citrus Bliss doTERRA invigorating blend. Here where they have the breakdown of all the magical ingredients, you know, just really special. <laughs> and let's go ahead and read them together. All right, so we have wild orange peel and vanilla bean absolute, which I thought was vodka, so that has me confused because that can't be right. And then a grapefruit peel, mandarin peel, lemon peel, bergamot peel, tangerine peel, and clementine peel. Well, here's the thing though, you guys. <laughs> Clementines and tangerines are actually types of mandarins. So <laughs> the funny thing here is that she's listing three separate ingredients that are all actually in fact one ingredient. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not the person that like made this post because stuff like that's embarrassing. Stuff like this is why I scrapped the bombshell beads video because like I didn't want to be that person out there saying something that somebody could then call out and be like, hey, hey, this is really factually incorrect. And then it's like, oh, wow. I could have really easily found out that information and somehow I didn't. Neat. That's a good look for me. <laughs> okay. Monet. Influencers join our company because they're smart. <sighs> smart. A 1% conversation rate isn't a good thing anymore. 1%. Oh, she meant to say conversion rate. <laughs> Influencers join our company because they're smart. They're smart. A 1% conversation rate isn't a good thing anymore. Your brand can and will explode with joining the right company. Yes, baby, we are so smart. Fire, fire, fire. So smart that they don't think that a 1% conversation rate is good. And honestly, I don't think a 1% conversation rate is good either. I think amongst family and friends and partners, it should probably be something higher, like 85% plus conversation rate. But I don't know, what do, what do I know about this? I'm one of the fools that am not smart and haven't joined Monet. So I guess the egg is on my face. Uh, my Cutco experience. So I almost got sucked into Cutco when I was in high school. 
I, like many other 17 year olds, got the letter in the mail about how I could be making $17 an hour with vector marketing. Even as a 17 year old, I think that seems kind of like a scam, but my mom tells me I should at least check it out. So I call and set up an interview. The interview takes place in the most boring looking office building and nothing was clearly labeled there. Like there were pieces of paper taped up on the walls telling me where to go. And I get concerned that this is a setup to kidnap me or something. <laughs> Honestly, that's what it sounds like. I get to the actual office, if you can call it that. And there were a bunch, I mean a bunch of other teens there. So I check in with a person holding a clipboard because there's not a desk or anything to check into. And I'm annoyed because I think that I'll have to wait ages for my time to interview. More people arrive and eventually they tell all of us to move into the conference room, which is just a room with a bunch of folding chairs set up in rows. This is where the interviews take place. By interview, I mean two people standing at the front of the room asking questions and then cold calling on people for answers. I don't remember what most of the questions were, but I vividly remember mine. Why are Cutco knives a great product even when the economy is in a recession? Um, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure your $400 knives are very much not recession proof. Even a 17 year old knows that. So I'm sitting there floundering and eventually the man just takes pity on me and tells me that Cutco is recession proof because everyone needs knives. Sure, Jan. They finish the interview with a demonstration of the knives, the classic stuff like cutting a dime or whatever. Somehow I redeemed myself from that question because they just start pointing to people and telling them to leave and I'm told to stay. So they tell us that this is round two of the interview and hand out sheets of paper. What is round two of this right rigorous interview process you might ask? Why it is telling them the name and phone number of three of my friends. At this point, I just want to leave. So I write down three fake names and numbers, hand it in my paper and I GTFO. Interviewing with Cutco, zero out of 10, do not recommend unless you enjoy uncom uncomfy interviews with sketchy office buildings that make you feel like you're about to be traffic. <laughs> yeah, please. Um, you know, I, I want to make this clear and maybe I haven't in the past uh, when I've been reading stories. If you are ever in a situation where you have what seems like a sketchy interview situation where you go to a place or a building and it seems weird and it doesn't seem professional and like some doors are locked, but some doors are open and it seems like you're being guided through a thing. Don't don't go. Just run. Leave. Don't do that. Just don't trust that gut feeling of yours, baby. Trust that it will keep you alive. Yes, it will. OK. All right. Moving on. Ooh, Pampered Chef is feeling excited. I'm up for the challenge. Comment below with one of your favorite foods to make. I will then post a Pampered Chef product that will make your food easier to cook and or prepare. Ready, set, go. Lasagna. Try the brownie pan for instant portion control and quick cleanup. You can make individual little mini lasagnas, which would be great for portion control and for kid sized portions. The word portion, first of all, was like three times in one post. But anyway, the funny part about this one, folks, is that the person responding <laughs> in the gray, uh, that's her upline. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. And like, she knows that, but she's still engaging in the conversation. Like, this is new information to this person. It's just so sad. Like just the pretending it, it really is. It's just adults playing pretend. Oh man. <laughs> it's so sad and I'm laughing. What does that say about me? I'm going to drink some tea. Moving on. How I found out about Primerica. When I was a junior, another student in my university approached me asking if I was interested in applying for a job in finance. I said, yes, business major. She mentioned a rep from a firm would be coming onto campus to conduct interviews, gave me time and location to meet up. This happened out of nowhere as I was walking to my car and of course my socially awkward self didn't ask a single question about this firm. Big mistake. On the day I show up and find a woman sitting out in the terrace and four to five other students show up, including the one who initially came up to me. She hands out these folders that say Primerica on them. Never heard of them. But after looking through about 10 seconds, it hit me that this one was one of those life insurance sales scams. I was immediately turned off, but was too shy to get up and walk away, especially in such a small group. So I sat there and listened. This woman talked about how she used to be an accountant and she was tired of her nine to five, how she discovered financial freedom by practically being her own boss, blah, 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 their typical spiel. She then asked if we'd be interested in sitting in on one of their training sessions at their branch office. 
At this point, I'm fully convinced that this is in no way aligned with my career path preferences, but decided to tag along anyway as I was curious to see what these training sessions were like. Also, I had a course assignment where I had to interview someone, so I figured I'd get something out of this and not have it be a complete waste of my time. We get there and it's this crappy warehouse style office with like 200 people and music playing. There's a quote unquote rich couple talking about the different tiers and how they made their dreams happen and now it's your turn. Afterwards, this lady's upline was pressuring me for about 20 minutes to sign up and put down five contacts. After dodging and avoiding, I had to tell them straight up I just wasn't interested and didn't feel comfortable giving out anyone's contact info either and hightailed it out of there. A year later, after graduating, my mom tells me she ran into one of my dad's cousins. Very distant relative can count on one hand the number of times we've ever interacted. And she mentioned how her firm was having a hiring event and how I should attend. I was skeptical given that she provided no name of details of this firm, no name or details about this firm, despite my mom having asked. I decided to stop by anyway. And what greets me when I arrive? That's right, you guessed it. Another crappy warehouse style office play place with a giant Primerica sign. I had been bamboozled yet again. <laughs> oh man, I didn't expect that ending. That was a bit of a twist. Uh, well, you know, you were trying to trust somebody who was a distant relative. You gave them the benefit of the doubt. It just happened to coincidentally be a company that had already tried to snag you and you had wriggled out of their grasp and then they tried again and you, you just wriggled out of there again. So good for you and thank you for sharing your story. If this were my car, I would be so mad. I, I worked so hard to be able to finally buy my own car. I didn't buy my own car until I think I was almost 30 and I still have her. She's with me. I love my car. But I mean, you know, I worked really hard to buy her and I do my best to take good care of her better now than I used to, of course. But I'm just saying if this happened and if you don't know what you're looking at, well, what this is, it's not a sticker. Nay, nay, that would be extra terrible. No, this is a uh, like a card, like a business card, you know, someone's personal little business card for their herbal life. Uh, I almost said business, but that's, uh, it's not their business, but I guess technically it is a faction of an Herbalife business, but they put the business card down and then it like rained or, or overnight moisture developed. And anyways, the material, the paper fused, the paper that got wet fused onto the actual window and that can cause a big mess. I've had people who actually have had that happen with like um, flyers for concerts or something that got left in their car and then it rained. It can actually leave permanent marks on your window that I think you can get removed, but I mean, it is like such a pain in the you know what. I would be, <laughs> oh, I'd be so mad, especially if it were an Herbalife card, like, oh, get out of here. <laughs> you guys are trying to cost me money even if I'm not involved with you. Like, no, go away, <laughs> not today. PSA, it's getting hot and close to summer, so beware of all the snakes out there. Here's some examples of what to look out for. Rattlesnake, other type of rattlesnake, some other threatening looking snake. Want to make an extra 2000 per month of working from home selling supplements? Oh my god, it's the worst snake of all. It's the hun snake. Oh god. <laughs> Okay, so a hun posted this in response to somebody who had the audacity to claim that MLMs and pyramid schemes are two shades of the same exact color. Okay, so let's see the major differences between MLM and pyramid schemes. Are you ready? So MLMs provide products and or services of real value. I think that definitely depends. A uh, pyramid scheme is no obvious product, okay? An MLM has low startup costs that often include tools to help sell company products and or services. Uh, that also depends, like what somebody's concept of a low startup cost might be high for someone else, I don't know. Okay, and then the pyramid scheme encourages a large initial investment and continual reinvestments. I don't know, I feel like some MLMs asking for 500 plus thousand, two thousand dollars to start up is a, that's a pretty large uh, investment if you ask me, okay. Ability to out earn anyone above you in the MLM category. Ability to out earn anyone above you, all right. And then the pyramid scheme, inability to out earn anyone above you, okay. No explanation on that, just they're just saying it. 
the MLM is upfront that earnings are generated from direct sales or from others you have recruited and that earnings are ultimately based on your effort. And then under the pyramid scheme, it promises large earnings with little effort. Well, I don't know. Every MLM scheme that I see is always trying to act like you're going to get full-time pay for part-time work. I feel like that's one of the most common lines that I see. So I don't know. They, I feel like Huns tend to kind of flip-flop on that depending on if it's convenient in the argument to use. So, okay, under the MLM, it says comprehensive training, Comp comprehensive, that certainly depends, don't you think? <laughs> comprehensive, according to who, training and support on products, recruiting and sales communication. And then pyramid scheme is poor or non-existent training. MLM says presents the opportunity and explains how it works, allowing people time and ability to make a well-informed decision. Yeah, you know, those other posts we just read prior to this where it was somebody being pressured in like a conference room full of a 300 other people. Yeah, that definitely sounds like they gave you lots of time, a whole five minutes. All right, and then the pyramid scheme, they say that often aggressive in its approach and may use false information, deadlines to urge people to join quickly. I, that sounds exactly like an MLM, but I don't know. I guess we're gonna play semantics now, which is just so fun. What a fun game. <laughs> Hey, I love your Insta and photography style. I hope you're keeping safe and healthy. I know this is so random and out of the blue, but I just came across your profile and you seem very positive and open-minded. I actually run an online business and have done so for the past few years. I would love to tell you about it and see if it's something you would be interested in. Would you be free for a chat on Friday? Hi, I can see that you were with Arbon. I know it must be a little scary to reach out to people about this business. I don't want to be offensive in the least, but I have done a lot of my own research and I find the business model of multi-level marketing to be completely at odds with my own ethical standards. If you look up the numbers, less than 1% of people involved with Arbon actually make any profit, while over 90% lose money. I hope it goes well for you. Take care. Hi, yes, I completely understand where you were coming from. How I see it is only 1% can be the CEO of Tesco, for example, but how many chances do you have to become that CEO? Whereas everyone has equal opportunity to become their own CEO as such, and if that 1% are willing to teach you how they got there and how to become successful, then I'm willing to work hard enough to make that happen. The time is going to pass anyway, and I would rather build up my future now so that in five years time, I'm I'm not in the same place. Hope this helps. X. <laughs> of course, that all sounds good on paper, but I would urge you to read some reports online about people who managed to get out of the Arbonne scheme. In any case, I recommend you keep track of your finances very thoroughly to see if it works out for you. Good luck. I think why I like this is because it remains civil throughout the discourse. You know, no one's just like randomly throwing in insults granted i will say the hun bots message does come across as that usual kind of like elitist copy pasta sort of thing where they are on their high horse and they they're charging ahead and they're gonna not be in the same place in five years and you will be by the way but not them no 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 um and just the misinformation about how the whole ceo concept works and you hear this a lot with these mlms they they get people to join they get them excited by convincing them that they too can be a ceo and if only one percent of the company ends up becoming that successful like what are the odds that like everybody is gonna, you know what it's just mm. <sighs> okay <laughs> on to the next one Hey girl, I recently started selling unique makeup and skincare and was curious if you would take a look at my website and see if there's anything you want to try. Sorry, but as a rule, I don't buy from MLMs. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> and then they, the person attaches the Google, if you type in unique, what is unique in MLM, <laughs> and then it pulls up <laughs> yeah, you do see that a lot too. I'm assuming that the people who join MLMs are told to say this. When people say, oh, is that an MLM? I think that they're told to respond back like, well, what, what is this MLM you speak of? <laughs> you know, it's just like playing dumb until the end, I guess. Maybe they think it's a better sales tactic. Maybe they think it makes the potential downline more trusting. 
quick heads up, you guys are gonna absolutely hate this. This was posted on a support group page for people undergoing dialysis. So keep that in mind as we read along here. I know what I'm about to post is non-dialysis related, but I wanna boost everyone's emotions, hopefully a little. I am a Sensi consultant. Is anyone interested in purchasing anything? Turn that frown upside down with some amazing products from waxes, warmers, laundry stuff, household cleaners, and car products. Why not cheer yourself up and come home if you're in center to a house that smells amazing, or if you're on home hemo, which is a form of dialysis you can do at home, or PD, why not do it while smelling a wonderful filled house? I wanna cheer everyone up with all that we go through daily, not to mention how ugly this world is these days. If interested, my online Sensi website is blabbity blab blab. Remember too, Christmas is right around the corner. These products do make for a good present. Once again, I know, not dialysis related. The fact that you have to start and end your post off by acknowledging that you know that this is not dialysis related proves that you already know that posting this, you knew as you were posting this, this is the wrong thing to do. And I don't know if you know a lot about dialysis, but it is no picnic. If you know anybody who is going through it, especially the ones where you have to go into a center multiple times a week uh, and have your arm stuck up to high heaven, like you, you think that those people are gonna just turn their frown upside down while they're going through a really uncomfortable and at times horrific medical procedures over and over and over again. Oh, it's just, I... <sighs> How can you be so small-minded to think that your wax melts, that your scented cleaning products are going to matter to somebody who is going through this? I, I You're trying, and not to mention how much all that stuff costs. Uh, hopefully these people even have insurance and even then it's still expensive and ridiculous and Frankly, I personally think there's a big problem with the American dialysis system. Uh, there's a lot of dialysis centers that are terrible. They're basically like dairy mills or uh, dairy farms. And it's that, you know, that's a whole nother tangent. I'm not sure why I'm going off on that. I think I think that's why I put this post up here, just because I don't I, I can't fathom a world where this person would think that this was somehow remotely appropriate. Not your husband's energy drink. Mm hmm. Well, okay, a few videos ago, I had a picture kind of similar. It was a hun who had a bookshelf covered in essential oils. I don't remember if it was Young Living or doTERRA at this moment. I don't think it really matters, potato, potato. However, uh, there was a bookshelf covered in essential oils and I said something kind of off the cuff, like that probably cost right there a couple thousand dollars. Well, I was about, and I'm not exaggerating, maybe about $10,000 off. It probably, maybe even more. Uh, it, it, some, some people calculated that that was approximately $20,000 worth of product on the shelf. Well, I did look it up, which I'll show you in another clip here just because I, I wanted to laugh at it. Um, but on average, these bottles of oils will range anywhere from 45, well over a hundred dollars. Some, like, some of the average blends are like 90 bucks. I'll prove it to you, you won't believe it. So if we see that there are rows, kind of double stacked, triple stacked in areas of these bottles, that probably cost, we'll say 50 bucks per bottle. Like my dudes, we are talking in the tens of thousands into the 20 thousands. Like it is an obscene amount of money spent on oil. Not even good oil, like olive oil that you could eat and would be delicious. No, it's stupid, fake. You know, like sure, okay, they all smell nice, but like, so what? Like candles smell good, but if somebody were to go out and buy $22,000 worth of candles, everybody would look at them and be like, what on earth are you doing? So in that same sense, I look at you and I say, what on earth are you doing? And also you're putting that in your coffee? <laughs> I like how I'm just now registering that part and she's promoting that you drink it. Okay, all around, this is just terrible. One of the comments in the subreddit actually said something, they pointed out something funny, like, how do you claim that on your taxes? Like, what do you do? And uh, that's a good question. <laughs> what do you do in this situation? What a mess. Okay, in the next clip, we're actually going to look at a bottle of oil from Young Living and we're gonna break it on down. Okay, so I went to the Young Living website and I went to their blend section, which I am told is where the most expensive oils lie. Okay, so I clicked on this one randomly. It's Australian blue. I've been watching a lot of Australian gardening shows lately, so I just felt right. So I clicked on this one. 
Australian blue is often used to uplift the spirit. This blend contains blue cypress, which is produced from the distillation of the highly prized Calitris Intratropica. <laughs> that was embarrassing, don't judge me. Wood in Australia, okay. Um, so this is a 15 milliliter bottle, um, which is barely anything, first of all. Um, okay. And then wholesale. So if you were to buy this, like let's say you were a distributor for the company and you were to buy it wholesale, you'd get it for $69 a bottle, which is still outrageous. But the poor sap you're going to sell it to is going to pay $91 and 12 cents for a 15 milliliter now if you're not sure how much that is please google it <laughs> and you need to see visually how little that is can you imagine spending 91 dollars on 15 milliliters of some cruddy oil that may or may not have some australian wood in now this if you were to scroll down on that page that little bottle of oil we were looking at it tells you down below how to use okay now you see in the highlighted i highlighted it because my mind couldn't believe it either all right so it says topically apply two to four drops directly to desired area dilution not required except for the most sensitive skin which is like all children and me and lots and lots of other people <laughs> I don't know. Don't ever put essential oils directly onto your skin without dilution, please. Just for the record, as a rule, try really hard not to do that, okay? Uh, blah, blah, blah. You can use it as aromatically, diffuse it, caution, keep out of reach of children. Okay, I appreciate that. But then the bottom part, it says avoid direct sunlight or UV rays for up to 12 hours after applying product. Like, I'm just saying, I feel like that needs to be at the top. Do you ever see that on like a lotion or a face wash you use? And then you finally read the fine print and it says like avoid direct sunlight for the next three weeks. And you're like, <laughs> Now, why didn't you say that in the beginning? I've been outside all, all day in the garden. Like, I'd really like to know. But anyways, I'm just curious what's in this essential oil that means that you have to be careful. Is it because it's actually an oil and it will, like, just um, make the sun, uh, like, cook you a little more? Like a, like a little extra sausage, you know? Like a little 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 crispy sausage? <laughs> what, do you, what am I talking about now? Okay. <laughs> Started talking about oils. Now I'm talking about breakfast. All right, we're moving on. Hello, everyone's mummy forgot a dis. Why is this fucking why? She is having a queening party June third. If people get it helped, if people goes it helped hers. You guys, I just want you to know this is definitely a grown woman who posted this. Definitely confirmed. No need buy any things. Mummy will goes and buy stuffs. Mummy says she saves money for these parties and can do twee. Oh, this is really actually painful. It's like hurting my teeth, like too much sugar. Okay, so you do not have to buy stuff. Parties are fun. I'm just going to start talking like Yoda. Parties are fun because Mummy and me starts funny talks in Facebooky Live and the lady doesn't know us. <laughs> different people she thinks we are i'm sorry okay all right i hate this why did someone post this who is this person how embarrassing like can you imagine knowing this person like knowing this woman who posted this and then reading it and being like why are you talking like a baby um I mean, like, you need to explain this more. What was the method? What was the theme? I need, I need a little more explanation on this one. Oh, man, Star Wars has already gone through so much. Like, does it really also need to be dragged through the mud further? This is too much for me. Oh, it's been a while since we laughed at some chonky lashes. So, okay, first picture looks normal. Second picture, I mean... Nope, we're getting chonky. Okay, and then by the third picture, it's just chonk city. Oh my god. Before, during, and after using Unique 40 Mascara, empowering women. You know, I really want them to let go of that hashtag because as a woman, I just <laughs> really don't appreciate uh, that. We, we don't claim Unique over here. <laughs> you guys aren't part of this. <laughs> oh, your chonky lashes are bringing me down. <laughs> 
I know Blair or Illuminati has featured uh, Hanbok comics on her channel before, but <laughs> I just had to include one. This is so funny, you guys. If you haven't checked out these comics before and you're into all this uh, anti-MLM stuff, like <laughs> you're going to get a big kick out of it. Like this person gets it. They know what's funny. <laughs> they understand our humor very well. This biz opportunity is perfect for you, hun. You can earn full-time income with part-time hours, all while just working from your phone. You can be working while lounging by the pool, drinking wine. It's so easy, it's practically lazy. Welcome to the team, hun. Now buckle down hard because you're gonna need to work hard if you wanna succeed. I'm talking 24 seven hustling. Not everyone has what it takes to be a boss babe, so don't let me down, hun. <laughs> <laughs> well, right there just shows the dichotomy of the hunnery. Initially, it's all uh, part-time work for full-time pay. Uh, you'll, you'll barely have to work at all. You'll make all this money. People who work hard are stupid. And my uh, neighbor just turned on his lawnmower, so that's cool. Um, but once you join the MLM, ooh, you better work hard. You better hustle. If you don't make money, it's your fault, hun. <laughs> It's too good. Check out Hanbok Comics for a laugh. Definitely worth it. All right, Fox Trotters, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked that video, please hit that like button down below. If you have any good comments or suggestions, please leave it down below as well. I love to hear what you guys have to say, and I love interacting with you all. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and become a Fox Trotter. Come join the den. Den Mother would love to have you. And shout out to all my patrons. You guys are incredible people. Thank you very much. All right, folks, if you would like to see some wholesome moment of the day, go ahead and stay tuned. It'll be rolling after this, and if not, I will see you in the next video. And as always, folks, until that next video. Take care. And now it's time for everyone's favorite segment of the video, wholesome moment of the day. Let's go see who you guys sent over. The animals featured in today's video were sent over by Aubrey. Thank you so much, Aubrey. And I'm going to go ahead and read the email sent along with the photos. I sent pictures of my three dogs. Bruce is the eldest. I have several pet names for him, but Brew Brew and Bubbers are the most common. He is a shaded cream mini dachshund. I got him from my neighbor who had gone through a phase where she would buy large numbers of puppies but couldn't take care of them at all. Yikes. She is in a much better headspace now. Glad to hear it. I would tag along when she took the puppy parade on their walks and fell in love with Bruce. So when she came to accept that she couldn't keep them all, we arranged for me to buy Bruce from her. He is coming up to his 14th birthday here soon on July 5th. Oh, happy early birthday, bubbers. <laughs> That's what I call my dog boots. Mac, a black and white pit mix, was my mom's dog. Sadly, my mom passed in December of last year. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. His previous owner loved him so much, but he didn't live alone and his roommates often forgot about him and didn't have dog food for him. My mom even found him a block away from a major highway, just having a runabout all alone. Eventually, his owner agreed that he should come with us. So around the summer of 2008, we took him in and he has been a jewel. Lastly, I have my mama's boy, Little Dipper. Dip for short. <laughs> he is the reddish copper tone, chocolate colored mini dachshund. He rules the house when it comes to toys. He can be a bit pushy, but he is also my super lovable and very sensitive guy who needs hugs and cuddles regularly. <laughs> I got him from the pet store, our locally owned pet store, so I knew I could trust their judgment, and I'm not sad I got him. I love my little brood immensely, and so I had to share them with everyone. Thank you so much for sharing, Aubrey. And I know that that can be a, a difficult um, point for a lot of people. It can be a little controversial to talk about buying dogs from pet stores and things like that. And you guys, you guys all know how I feel. I, I don't agree with that. But also, now that the dog is in her life, I don't want that to end either so I'm happy that they are together and I think a lot of us feel that way so I'm just glad that this little family came together as they did and Aubrey thank you so much for sharing your story and I'm so sorry for the loss of your mom and good on you for taking care of these cute little dogs and if you're looking to get a new member of your family I definitely recommend to adopt not shop check out your local shelters your local humane society donate if you can volunteer if you can foster if you can and don't forget to spay new to your pets and if you want to see a photo of your pets here then go ahead and send it to my email which is in my channel description and you will see your pets here eventually